Hello and a warm welcome to The Federal. I'm Neelu Vyas. Center has slammed the BBC series on PM Modi, saying that it is a piece of propaganda which lacks objectivity and it also reflects a colonial mindset. And the center then went ahead and told the Twitter and the YouTube to remove all references of that documentary. But after that, what has happened? The opposition leaders have tweeted the link, the alternative link, and said, in fact, people like Mohua Moitra, who's a Tr Trinamool Congress uh, uh, MP, she has said that she's an elected representative of the world's largest democracy. So why shall she accept censorship? So the point we are trying to discuss today is that are we really heading towards a censorship? Does Modi government have to hide something? And also, there are a lot of loose ends within the documentary. So we shall try and discuss. Joining me now on the program is Professor Rapur Varans from Delhi University. He's a famous author, columnist, writer. Thank you, sir, so much for joining on The Federal. So my first question to you is, uh, what you ha have you really seen the documentary? And uh, yeah. there are a lot of loose ends uh, within the documentary. Uh, say, for example, it doesn't uh, dwell too much on her in Pandya. Then it doesn't talk about the fact that, you know, why that S6 coach was burnt. So is there a selective omission also done by the documentary? Uh, see, yes, I have seen, uh, watched the documentary. And uh, it does talk about uh, the burning of uh, coach S6. And it could have talked about... Uh, the non-action of the then railway minister Nitish Kumar who didn't order an inquiry, the, but, but then it, it could also have talked about the inquiry set up by the next railway minister, Lalu Prasad Yadav, the Banerjee Committee, uh, and also about other theories of how the bogey could have burned, because uh, how was it assumed that it was burned by Muslims? This was the assumption from which uh, even in this documentary, if you look at the old, uh, old clip, uh, it, it's mentioned that Muslims burned it. So how was it assumed? So it did need uh, some time and some investigation and some discussion of different theories. For example, Mukul Sinha, late Mukul Sinha, father of critics and of art news, right. he spent quite a lot of time and it, he in, on himself investigated and he came uh, came up with a theory uh, whether it was possible to burn the bogey from outside it was not plausible that that was the theory uh, and and then uh, the other question that shankar singh wagela raised recently that how is it that if it was burned from outside how how was it known to them that bogey number x6 carried car sales? So Absolutely. how uh, how was bogey number F six targeted specifically? So Sankarshan Wagela is indicating something else. It's a larger conspiracy, and it's much more sinister. Uh, maybe uh, it was done by people who who had already prepared for a reaction thing. So there was already uh, a preparation uh, for that. And it was part of that conspiracy. It was like a uh, burning of Rick Stack. So the fire of Rick Stack. That is what Shankar Singh Bagela is. So you did expect the BBC to uh, dwell at length, at least uh, but examining. Why think, but BBC looking at the authenticity of uh, BBC and the kind of quality research they do and which they have claimed as well. Uh, why do you think they would have... Uh, omitted these portions and why would they have not gone into details like these? In, in fact, if if there is any critique, this is the critique, this is the kind of critique I, I would do. But I can understand if you are making a documentary and if you have paucity of time and uh, so you will uh, omit something and it, the director will have its own explanation. But this is my question, that at least uh, the burning of uh, bogey S6 uh, required more time for discussion. So uh, that's a question. Uh, but Harin Pandya is mentioned. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Harin Pandya episode is, I think, gets a fair amount of time. Right. It was very difficult 
for BBC to uh, to spend more time on Haran Pandya episode than what was given to it because, as as you could have noticed, there were not too many people to to speak to uh, to come on record. So if you are a credible uh, channel, you cannot cite sources uh, who are who are not ready to part with information. But but Professor Apurvanan, people like Swapandas Gupta have spoken. People like Arundhati Roy, they have spoken. Um, Arundhati is uh, understandable. But uh, my point is that Swapandas Gupta, if he was speaking to BBC, uh, did he take consent uh, from uh, his own party? Uh, did the government give him the consent to do this? And if he didn't take the consent, did the government know about the fact that Swapandas Gupta is going to be interviewed by BBC on a documentary which is based on Godra or BBC hit something? That is also another question which is coming up. That is for the BBC and Swapandas Gupta to respond. We don't know. And I, I don't know any professional agency, a professional agency like BBC would hide something from someone like Swapandas Gupta, who is a senior leader of Bharti Janta Party. Uh, and and, and not uh, inform him that he was going to be part of this documentary. So this is unthinkable. Uh, it was not doing a string operation on him. It was, uh, uh, it, it was an inter open interview. So it's unthinkable for BBC to hide the fact that he was going to be part of this documentary. He knew it very well. And it, he has been given ample time. Uh, you see, he, he is responding to all the allegations. And he is responding to it very strongly. Not only Sopan Das Gupta, uh, a relatively unknown uh, spokesperson or leader of BJP, uh, Dr. Adesh, or I'm forgetting his full name, but he has also been given time. So I, I think BBC has produced this documentary uh, in a professional manner. It has tried to uh, get the other side as well. And the other side is represented by these two people, uh, that is uh, Sopandas Gupta and Dr. Adesh. So questions are being put to them and they are refuting it. So you cannot claim that BBC has presented one-sided picture. And the blame that was uh, put on BBC when it made a film on Bengal Femin and, and, and put the blame on Winston Churchill. Then the allegation on BBC was that it didn't show the or it didn't present the side of Winston Churchill. So at yes. least in, uh, in in this film, you cannot uh, you cannot charge BBC with uh, one sidedness. You feel that there is a balanced portrayal of uh, the entire incident. I think so. Balance meaning BBC was doing an investigation, and this episode is particularly. Uh, based on uh, the inquiry done by the then British uh, High Commissioner or British authorities. And uh, so it talks and it's, it starts with the survivor of uh, the British family uh, of Indian origin. Two of uh, the family were killed and the third was the survivor. So it's, in my opinion, it, it's trying to find an answer to the question of this survivor, that how were my uncles killed? And who, who killed, killed them? And what was the nature of the violence? Why was it not contained? And why was police so right. so, so uh, neutral? Uh, so this, this is the question. You, yeah, but, but if you look at the whole uh, documentary in entirety, it has not dwelt into something which is new. Uh, most of the people knew these facts. TV channels have reported it. And the only uh, novel aspect which comes across is the discrete inquiry or the discrete investigation which was done by the UK government and the interview of uh, the then uh, UK diplomat, Jack Straw. That is the novel part of it. Now, why does the current BJP government label this as a propaganda which lacks uh, objectivity, which reflects colonial mindset. Uh, why do they say this? Is, is, is the government trying to hide something? Obviously, the government is hiding, uh, hiding the truth. Uh, and, and, uh, and this government or the present prime, prime minister who was 
and the chief minister of Gujarat then, he also hid the truth. Uh, so this denial is also not novel. Because if you go back to 2002, uh, then the chief minister Narendra Modi denied, if you look at his speeches, given uh, as part of his Gaurav Yatra, Gujarat Gaurav Yatra, he is telling his audience that pe people uh, who are enemies of Gujarat are spreading this mis misinformation that violence was done in Gujarat. People were killed, women were raped, and he asked them that, is it true? And he makes them respond, no, no, no. So he's leading the whole state into a state of denial. And so this denial is also not novel, it's not new, uh, and they are very cons consistent in their denial of, of the complicity of the state government and also of the severity and extent of the violence. But Professor Purvanath, people are also questioning the timing of uh, this documentary having released. That why is uh, BBC releasing a documentary like this at a time when uh, India is uh, heading the G20 uh, presidentship? And all sorts of questions are raised. And then another uh, charge which is being made uh, by the government supporters is that uh, BBC is trying to challenge or undermine the authority of the Supreme Court, the Indian uh, enforcement agencies. So would it be right to see it in that light? Because uh, Kiran Rijuju yesterday said that all these people who are putting out uh, links of this documentary belong to the Tukre Tukre gang. Now, how does one read that? So all those who are critics of this government or critics of uh, the policies of this government uh, are uh, defamed as Tukre Tukre gang. And uh, this has been the pattern since uh, this government took charge. So this is also not new, that you defame those who are critiquing you and thereby delegitimize their critique. Uh, and that is uh, that is the strategy or tactics of this government. And it's no, but new. Professor, uh, Professor talking but, purely in context with this documentary, if uh, Narendra Modi has been exonerated by the Supreme Court, he has been exonerated by the SIT, he is in a way has got a clean shit. And uh, all the stains of Godhra have, in a way, been washed off. So why is then, the government scared of this documentary? My point is that why is the government scared of this documentary? No, government is, I don't know whether it's scared of this documentary or not, but it's using, it's weaponizing this documentary. It's using okay. this documentary to tell its constituents that, look, here are uh, conspirators, again active against us. So you need to rally around. That is what they are trying to do uh, by telling their constituents that this is a conspiracy and a colonial mindset and anti-India people have again ganged up. So government is using it. It's not scared. I won't say that it's scared. It's using it to again arouse the so-called nationalist emotion of its constituents. Uh, that is my reading of uh, the reaction of the government. It's not scared, but it's also a fact that uh, by being so belligerent and, and by telling that it's BBC, because BBC is, uh, lies outside India, and it helps the politics of BBC, uh, of Bharti Janata Party, to lay the blame on outside forces. Mm -hmm. uh, so and and it comes very handy because BBC is an outside force, and here are Indians who are siding BBC. So what better example you need than this collaboration between uh, outside anti-India agents and uh, the inside enemies, and the internal enemies that RSS has been talking about, and the Prime Minister has been talking about, and others have been talking about that internal enemies are more dangerous. Yeah. I, I think you're right when you say that it's easier for uh, the BJP narrative to say that, look, there are so many powerful forces which are outside India, which are there to derail the Modi government or derail Narendra Modi per se. But uh, why do you think that the government is banning it from Twitter and for YouTube, from YouTube? And uh, will it not be more mud on the face of the government? 
Uh, it doesn't mind <laughs> doing that if you go by uh, its fast record. Uh, it doesn't mind uh, because the standards of civility doesn't don't apply to this government. Uh, so what we think is uh, is defaming you. This government thinks that it raises its esteem in the eyes of its constituents. So I, and and that's why because uh, banning of uh, this movie on Twitter. Now people will say that you are defying the law of the land. when you view this movie so yeah. is it fair to defy the law of the land yeah. as they are saying that why did bbc make this documentary when supreme court has acquitted or given clean chit to narendra modi but if you if you listen to the person who was present when ahsan zafri was making calls so can you deny that eyewitness account supreme court has has not been able to respond to that has not been able to respond to zakia jafri's please so the matter matter is not closed it's yet open the wounds are open answers have not been given and the seekers of justice are not not bound by geographies national geography so uh, and and in this world as as i said that there were british nationals british citizens who were killed on the soil of india it is a matter of shame for india that citizens of a different country were killed here and you have no answer to the question how were they killed now if that government or people living in that country think that it is their duty to find the answer if you are careless about search for truth if truth doesn't match to you if justice doesn't match to you so do you expect that uh, people of other countries are like you no so going truth ahead and, and banning the documentary going ahead now and banning the documentary from all social media platforms and then the opposition uh, taking up the guns and saying that look uh, uh, we are there we can post we can still post the links and uh, ensure that the BB, uh, the bbc documentary is watched by more and more people so do you this do you see this as a new flashpoint which could have some kind of a diplomatic fallout as well because uh, it involves the interview of jack straw it involves the fact that the uk government uh, did conduct a discreet inquiry probably the government's Uh, did know or rather kaval sibal has said that no he 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 was in the know of it so uh, how does it play out diplomatically i think what uh, we have observed in the recent past is that uh, indian diplomacy is getting more and more belligerent so okay. it's it's acting as an, as a branch of its domestic politics so its foreign uh, policy is also getting into that nationalist mode Uh, and it's uh, in fact playing to the gallery playing uh, and it's talking to the constituents in india rather than doing its diplomatic work and that is very unfortunate the way our uh, external affairs minister has been talking it's it's very very unlike uh, a diplomat it's not uh, diplomatic language that he uses uh, i i think what they have calculated is that belligerence pays so what uh, we expect that uh, they they would go aggressive with the british government and 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 it would be useful for their domestic audience indeed and uh, they are going to put out the second part uh, of the documentary soon but uh, this whole narrative that you know the government is trying to censor we are heading in towards a censorship uh, does it substantiate this fact further that we are in undeclared emergency or uh, how how do you see this this whole bit of how censorship is being implemented by again omitting this documentary from all the social media platforms and uh, also the fact that why should indian audience be denied uh, be denied the viewing of this documentary will it not tantamount to some kind of a violation of a fundamental right it is it is 
it goes without saying that it is a violation of uh, our fundamental right, uh, uh, the right to freedom of expression and uh, other rights as well, the right to know. And But if you look at what was done to Malika Sarapai recently, she was not allowed to dance and the whole program had to be cancelled and right. moved to some other. And uh, a play by a uh, playwright of Paldat disallowed at uh, theatre festival of uh, National School of Drama. So we see a pattern. In fact, censorship is in vogue and disallowing of this documentary is yet another example. We are very much uh, in a state uh, which, uh, which is using its emergency power or other powers to censor everything which is critical of this government. And this, uh, we need to understand the gravity of uh, the situation. This, of course, is one side that we are censoring and why should we censor? It is a violation of the fundamental right. But then the other view is that why should an outside country challenge or undermine uh, the authority of the apex court or of our enforcement agencies? Uh, uh, will the government not be right when it says this or when uh, the BJP leaders say this? First, it's a joke because Supreme Court is being attacked by this government uh, every day. The law minister is attacking Supreme Court. The vice president is attacking the Supreme Court. Uh, so there's no respect for Supreme Court in this government. So to, to talk about the supremacy of Supreme Court by this government, it's a joke. Uh, but this documentary is not questioning Supreme Court. It's doing its journalistic duty. So journalists are not bound by what the courts are doing. Courts are also bound by procedures. Courts are bound by what prosecution has presented before them. Courts have their limitations. But journalism is not bound by that. So we need to understand that journalists have no duty to respect uh, what was reached or concluded by the court, it can also be questioned. And this is exactly what journalists need to do. And this is exactly what BBC has done. It has, it, it has, I have not uh, noticed in, in this episode, at least, that it has uh, questioned the Supreme Court. It has not. It has done its duty. It's looking for truth. Supreme Court is bound by the case presented by the prosecution, evidences, other things, and it reached the conclusion it reached. But should journalists uh, feel constrained by the fact that Supreme Court has reached a conclusion, therefore the matter is closed? No. Right. My last question towards the last lap of the interview, that uh, what is the biggest takeaway for you after you've seen the documentary? And uh, what does it really show about the BJP government and the conduct of uh, the Prime Minister as the Chief Minister then? Yes. Yeah, I would say that uh, as, as the Chief Minister, if you forget the politics which he professes or practices, uh, he failed. Because what is the duty of a Chief Minister? A, a, a bogey of a train is burnt. What would you do? The first thing, what would you do? Now, the bogey has been burned and you don't know the cause. This is what we, will you say, that we don't know the cause. We will investigate and reach out to the people. So we should not in haste reach conclusion. So this, this was the first thing a chief minister, a responsible chief minister should have done rather than instigating by telling that Naradhamu, you know, Naradhams have done it. By, uh, it, it was again a dog whistle, which it did. Secondly, by ensuring that Muslims were protected, because already statements were being made, Vishu Hindu Parishad had announced its plan. Thirdly, not allow the dead bodies to be paraded on the street of Ahmedabad. That is the least that you expect from a responsible administrator. Fourth thing, 
not to go and rampage the bogey s6 right because it was a very crucial piece of evidence and you contaminated it you violated all the, the what would the forensics do now no it's all contaminated so these were the few things we expected from a responsible chief minister and where he failed completely if we leave aside his right but the bbc documentary has also failed in a way to uh, uh, portray the genesis of uh, the godra riots the genesis of how that coach was burnt so would you not really pick these loose ends also from the documentary and say something about that as well i i have already told you that i wanted more time to be given to uh, uh to the binding of courts as six and different right. theory contesting theories and why uh, the then railway minister didn't order an inquiry why the inquiry of banerjee commission was disregarded by the courts uh, and and what were the conclusion by this uh, by banerjee commission and what did mukul sinha say and what did other uh, investigative uh, the fact finding team say so that is something which requires more space more time uh, and and that i felt lacking taking a cue from what you have just said would you dub this documentary as some kind of a lazy piece of journalism which uh, we expected some high standards from BB- bbc but they didn't fulfill that would it be right to ask no that would be unfair to say that i i think it uh, it, it should have or because this burning is used as an excuse for the subsequent violence so uh, in all fairness it should have been examined uh, it was not done but the later part i would say has been done very professionally so i won't hold it against uh, this documentary i won't call it a lazy Okay yeah. one last question before i just wind up the interview because it I, i had it in mind and i just forgot to ask you completely about it that there was a campaign on twitter which was trending saying that bbc india quit and uh, are one of the very prominent anchors uh, you know carried that campaign that quit india bbc uh, that was a kind of narrative which we saw two days before and uh, and everybody knows that anchor very well now why do you think this kind of a campaign has picked up thread for a for a media organization with so much of credibility no it's again uh, all all these media houses are now part of the bjp brigade and they're not godi media to repeat uh they're pro actively anti muslim and they're pro actively pro hind so it's and they are voluntarily doing it and since you want to tell uh, hindus and especially the constituents of bjp that we are in a state of warfare so this language suits the whole uh, narrative as you say that quit india as if you are in a state of warfare there are outside agencies attacking you and you have to be alert and uh, you have to be combative and you have to force them out so it again gives you a cause so that cause is being given to the people absolutely and i'm sure uh, uh, this documentary will be discussed uh, dissected more in the days to come the second part is still awaited i don't know what kind of reactions will be coming but thank you so much uh, professor apurvarant for joining on the federal and one appeal to the viewers please share this video as widely as you can send us your feedback and also stay tuned to the federal thank you sir thank you so much Subscribe to the Federal's YouTube page for more interesting updates.